Hello and welcome to this video summarizing our article entitled Ixazomib lenalidomide dexamethasone in a routine clinical practice. Effectiveness in relapsed refractory multiple myeloma, which was recently published in Future Oncology. I am Professor Roman Hayek. I am head of Department of Hematooncology at the University Hospital Ostrava in the Czech Republic and the lead author of this paper. It's widely acknowledged that the clinical outcome in a routine clinical practice often differ from those reported in clinical trials of multiple myeloma therapies. And why this? Because inclusion and exclusion criteria. Differences in patient characteristic and the strict eligibility criteria used for enrollment in clinical trials largely contribute to this gap in effectiveness versus efficacy. Analyses show that up to 72% of real-world patients with relapsed or refractory myeloma will not meet the eligibility criteria for clinical trials. Differences in patients' outcomes may also arise from a shorter duration of therapy achieved in the real world versus the clinical trial setting due to several factors including patients and or physician preferences, treatment convenience, and treatment center policies or procedures. Observational studies can provide important information on the effectiveness and safety of new therapies in routine clinical practice, as they have less stringent inclusion criteria and consequently include a more diverse patient population that is often underrepresented in clinical trials. Ixazomib is the first oral proteasome inhibitor approved for the treatment of multiple myeloma. It has been approved in more than 70 countries in combination with lenalidomide and dexamethasone to treat patients who have received at least one prior therapy. These approvals were based on the result of the phase three randomized double-blind thermaline MM1 study, which demonstrated a significantly longer progression-free survival with ixazomib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone, which from now on I will refer to as XARD, compared with placebo, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone. Response rates were also significantly improved. Evidence from several observational studies suggests that outcomes for patients with multiple myeloma treated with ixazomib in a routine clinical practice may be broadly or comparable to those observed in the phase three thermaline MM1 study. However, long-term data in a large, varied and unselected patient's population are lacking. We therefore perform and pooled analysis of the INSIGHT MM observational study and the Czech Registry of Monoclonal Gammapathies, or RMG for short, to evaluate the effectiveness and safety of XARD in patients with relapsed refractory multiple myeloma in routine clinical practice. Inside MM is the largest global prospective observational study conducted in multiple myeloma patients today. It has enrolled more than 4,000 300 adults patients with newly diagnosed or relapsed refractory multiple myeloma in 15 countries worldwide. Inside MM is following patients for an extended period of time to track patterns of DZ presentation, patients' characteristic, treatment patterns, clinical outcomes, and of course, safety. The Czech RMG includes clinical data on diagnosis, treatment, clinical outcomes, safety, and survival for more than 7,000 patients with multiple myeloma in the Czech Republic and Slovakia. For this analysis, we identified adult patients with relapsed refractory multiple myeloma who had received at least one prior therapy and who had been treated with XARD. Individual patients level data from Inside MM and the Czech RMG database were pulled and analyzed. Data included patient's demographics, DZ characteristics, treatment history, treatment effectiveness, and safety. 
We analyze data from 2016 to 2019 from inside MM and for 2007 to 2020 for the Czech RMG. We identified a total of 263 patients from 13 countries with 132 patients from inside MM and 131 from the Czech RMG. After the Czech Republic, most patients were from the United Kingdom and the United States. The overall median age of patients at the start of XRD therapy was 68 years, with 15% of patients aged more than 75 years. Across all lines, 35% of patients had international staging system stage 3 at diagnosis. Patients had received a median of two prior lines of treatment before starting XRD. Overall, 44% of patients received XRD as second line, 35% as third line, 11% as fourth line therapy, and 10% as fifth line therapy or later. Across lines, treatments received prior to XRD included bortezomib in 90% and lenalidomide in 27% of patients. 10% of patients were refractory to prior treatment with a proteasome inhibitor and 7% of patients were refractory to lenalidomide. 86% of the patients received XRD at an academic or university facility while 14% were treated in a community hospital or clinic. Among 186 available patients, the combined overall response rate for XRD was 73%, including 37% of patients with a very good partial response or better. Across all patients in this analysis, the median follow-up was close to 15 months, the median duration of therapy with XRD was 11.8 months. The median time to next therapy was 33 months. And the median progression of survival was 21.2 months. At the time of analysis, median overall survival had not yet been reached. When analysed by a line of therapy at which patients received XRD, duration of treatment, time to next therapy, progression of free survival and overall survival all tended to be longer in patients receiving XRRD in second or third line, shown in blue and green in the figure, compared with those treated in fourth line or beyond, shown in purple and red. With respect to safety, Ixazomib dose reduction were required in 17% of patients while lenalidomide dose reduction were needed in 36% of patients. Adverse events leading to dose reductions included hematologic and gastrointestinal toxicities and fatigue. Due to adverse events, a total of 32% of patients discontinued ixazomib and 30% discontinued lenalidomide. The most common adverse events leading to discontinuations were infections and hematologic toxicity for both agents. The findings from this large pooled analysis show that the effectiveness of XRD in routine clinical practice is similar to the efficacy of XRD reported in the phase three registrational tourmaline MM1 trial in which an overall response rate of 78% and a median progression of free survival of 20.6 months were reported. This similarity between efficacy and effectiveness was observed despite our population having more advanced disease and being more heavily pretreated than patients in the Thermaline MM1 study including a higher proportion of patients who had prior exposure to proteasome inhibitors and immunomodulatory drugs, as well as a proportion of patients refractory to proteasome inhibitors or to lenalidomide. From a safety perspective, we found XRD to be well-tolerated 
with no new safety signal or concerns. Additionally, rates of dose reductions and discontinuations due to adverse events were similar to those reported in terminal line MM1. The all oral XRD regimen represents a convenient treatment approach for patients who may find it difficult to assess infusion centers or who do not want to travel to a hospital or clinical setting to receive treatment. We believe that data such as these are important as they help to build a more complex picture of clinical effectiveness and develop confidence in the use of new treatment in routine clinical practice. This, in turn, should lead to better outcomes for patients with multiple myeloma. Thank you for watching.